Apogee 8 podcasts are brought to you by Apogee Events, your all-inclusive and one-stop wedding event shop. Apogee's seven times finalist for Best Wedding DJ, Photo Booth, and Florist Megan has been twice nominated for Best Flowers for Weddings in Oregon for the last two years in a row to Oregon Bride Magazine. You can also check out our showroom and warehouse venues, uh, rentals, photography, wedding films. See how the photo booth works. Even check out this podcast studio, which is available for rent. Uh, All-inclusive events at Apogee traditionally save 10 to 30% off of most of weddings because vendors are not competing against you for their business. They don't have to open up and go spend money at these giant showcases. They're all right here under one roof, serving Salem, Portland, Eugene, Bend, Oregon, soon to be the rest of the country. Uh, mention Apogee 8 Podcast for 10% off of all things at Apogee or enter promo code 8 Podcast at checkout and instantly reserve your date and your services online at weareapogee.com. Weareapogee.com, promo code 8 Podcast at checkout will reserve your date instantly and save you 10% off of your event. <laughs> I guess I should move. <laughs> My, I can't tell if I like. See, check that out. That's kind of cool, though. It gives people something to look at up there. You think you like? Yeah, I don't think it's fine. I don't think it's hurting anything. Yeah, it's just the back of my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At least you have an iPhone now. Hey yo, hello TikTok. Squirly. I am gonna talk about TikTok again. Yeah, you are gonna talk. Yeah. All right. Tell us about. Tell I us about do, the talk. I want to do face recognition with the mic in the way. No, well, well that's because it covers his face. So okay, we so we just um, yeah. So the last episode we talked about attachment theory mm-hmm. and um, how we're gonna follow up on that. So that's so that was fun, and now we have some real stuff. So tell us about your TikTok. Oh, so <laughs> I just have to tell you how awesome TikTok's algorithms are. You know, it gives me my TikTok crush uh, very first, and then it gives me my most fascinating thing uh, I follow, and then um, my number two favorite person. So who are your favorite TikTok, people? Oh, that's embarrassing. Are they all the same type of girls? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> one is a flight attendant. Um, oh. Yeah. Amanda. Are the others? Mosegura. Yeah, I'm messing that up. Another girl? Uh, this was actually the first person I ever followed because I, um, I was like, oh, that's a really good song. Yeah, he's pretty handsome, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's your crush. Yeah. No. The, the, first, f- the first one? Yeah, the flight attendant. That right? guy? No. He's not the flight attendant. No. The tuggy guy? I don't know. No. It wasn't. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God. All right. Type my God. All right. Uh, so, so, anyways, we're going to talk about looting, protesting. So, um, it's just more fun to make fun of your TikTok than I know, that. but right. I have a cool TikTok. Thank you, TikTok, for <laughs> just being so awesome. Yeah. Want to send me like that sweatshirt? That'd be cool. But um, but anyway, so people's cities are on fire, and everybody hates each other. Mm-hmm. And what? Well, but but not really. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I just think that their people are pissed off about what they've been getting because the, I, the obviously the system that we have hasn't been working for a lot of people and now they've been locked inside for a few months and that's not good for people. Nobody no, likes being locked in a cage. That's definitely not good. No. And now the and, and then really there's just opportunity because when we talked about this before the show too, if we had the opportunity when we were 19 years old to just run down the street and just scream and yell and make a lot of noise and carry a sword, like we probably would have. Mm-hmm. Because it just because we thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. Yes, we would have. <laughs> we would have. We we, we, just, we would have just thought it was funny. So we're kind of assholes in that regard too. Um, but uh, I don't know. I can't imagine doing that now. That's the difference. I can't imagine uh, trying to carry a sword or just go down there and, and just like kick, you know, smash car windows and things no, like that. No, because you're, like, uh, you know, old with a bad back, a mortgage, no, and dude, my bills back to is pay. Strong. And wrong. It's a stiff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're uh, getting getting out of bed becomes more of a process than an event. But yeah. we and go, we, we live in try. Oregon. Oregon is some you know, is a very liberal state to begin with on the uh, west side and not at yeah. all on the right on the east side. Um, so this this weekend we're uh, we went to the park and there's these yeah. some redneck kids like you and I were when we were growing <laughs> up. Uh, you know, that busted up the pickups rednecks. and uh, 
you know, they're burning more, there's more fuel coming out of their exhaust than they were actually burning in their engine. And they had their little Confederate flags up. We never did that, but, um, they had their Confederate flags up playing, you know, Hank Williams Jr. And they, they went to Riverfront Park in, in Salem and it's a pretty big park and riled a whole bunch of people up and hung out there. And then they drove around the downtown area, uh, our state capital, uh, where there's a lot of people out protesting right now with uh, BLM. And yeah, they spray painted the statues up They front. did. Yeah, they spray painted the statues. There's some dicks on those. <laughs> there is. There are. Not very good ones either. No, no. not even good. Like, uh, we graffiti dicks a lot better than that back know, in the day. they probably, in their defense for their poor dick drawing, they probably didn't have a lot of time to put in a lot they of detail. They were on detail. some pressure. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, if you're, pre- if you're spray painting the state capitol, like... <laughs> You got to be yeah. a little nervous, I think. <laughs> Your can's a little shaky. Well, I think the like, problem is they went up and not um, <laughs> over. You got to do the over. Oh, yeah. Well, Nobody gotta, ever does the up You got to build one. the rocket ship one. Right? Yeah. No, that's what they did. They did rocket ship going up. There was a couple. Yeah. yeah they, oh, they they didn't do the down. The, they oh, didn't do the, the sideways with the... the bana- oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's my yeah. go-to uh, dick drawing. But, but yeah, um, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my conversation with these guys. I followed them around. You know, they were harassing people at the Capitol. And, you know, um, we call it rolling coal when you have a diesel truck and you make it smoke really bad. And they're doing burnouts. And, uh, you know, I followed them uh, to West Salem. And I stopped at the grocery store and got some Mountain Dew. And I went over to him in the parking lot. And I said, hey, guys, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to do. And I'm not here to tell you what you're doing is wrong. But I'm, I'm telling you, as an older person now, 35, you need to do it smarter. You know, my friends and I do exactly the same shit you're doing right now when we were your age. But you need to be smarter because this wasn't going on when we were growing up, you know. Just drop some dad advice on those boys. I did. Because <laughs> they're harmless, you know. They're, they're, well, they're not harmless, but they're not meaning harm right now. They're, they're kind of dumb 16, sure. 17, 18-year-olds. Well, hopefully they don't. The, the problem is some of them have. Yeah. You know, in our, like for us, when we, like, we did that stuff, mm-hmm. we did stupid stuff in the mailboxes, mm-hmm. y- you know, like, not anytime recently because we're old now. <laughs> but back in the day, before, very every, far out of statute before, of every, before anybody had cameras on their phones, we'll just put it that <laughs> way, there was, we would go out and, yeah, we would get the garbage cans, the mailboxes, and just you know, d- drive through people's yards. Stupid stuff. Absolutely. And l- we didn't do it because we hated anybody. We did it because we, well, at the time, we did it because we thought it was funny. It was funny. You know, it, blowing now, off steam. L- looking funny. back, I, I, like, like. I know that it was funny that we did it back then. I don't. It's not funny now to me. Like I don't look back on it and just laugh about the experience. Yeah. Look back and like, well, that was a real dick thing to do. Like I can't believe I did that. But I, I, I just I I think that we did it because we felt that we didn't have control of things in other areas of our lives. Yeah, and or you had a little. You had a little new power. You know yeah, that you were you were how far we yeah, could take exactly. that power. The, you know, the, the power of freedom. The power of freedom. Yeah, you know, a little more power than you used to have, and uh, that had to take it, it out. Too. Yeah, I mean, if somebody rode through your front yard, you'd be so mad, and then you'd you'd calm down and go, "That's just karma." <laughs> you know, like I have to throw some seed down. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just told these guys, I'm like, dude, you got to do this smarter than that. You can't be driving through, you know, Salem right now. You got to sm- pick smaller towns and make a big parade that way. But you know, people are going to try to confront you. People may uh, try to attempt to damage your vehicle, and that's probably your m- most prized possession as a teenager. So think of this. Yeah. Do it a little smarter. You know. Yeah. So that was my two you cents just, to them. You can't. Yeah. You can't provoke anybody, and you can't. You know what do you really? They know. You know what you're going down there when you do mm-hmm. that stuff. If you go down there with a big sign that says Antifa, or you go down there with a big Confederate flag. You know exactly what you're doing. And yeah. you guys would probably be buddies if you met under different circumstances because you are the seem to be the same type of person that's if you're causing going, the problems. If you were going to a peaceful presentation and you bring a claw hammer with you, <laughs> you have already planned <laughs> to damage things. I have an addictive personality, <laughs> and I cannot go to those protests. Because, you know, people are like, we're going to smash in these windows. And I'd be like... Stand aside. I got this one. And see, I know I can't do that. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. You just can't get can't oh, keep it contained. No. Uh, <laughs> like I would, I'd be Not ripping a, a fence post out, smashing in walls and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's it it is our culture. It's our instinct of you know cavemen raiding other cavemen sites and uh, all the way to now. You know, people if people are given the chance to cut loose like they are. And w- especially when they're fired by anger, if they're it's dangerous, it is very dangerous. How do we think people are dying? People are getting ran over. Yeah. People are yeah. getting trampled. People are burning. We, we can't. The truth is, is I, be- I, I believe that the gr- okay. So the greatest warriors from back from like Alexander the great, um, you know, like Caesar and like all these guys, like they were young mm-hmm. when they started to conquer and violent, <laughs> um, and did extreme things and after successes with doses of power did more and more extreme things that's just the nature of a lot of people we have an animal tendency and we see it we're seeing it played out in every part of government right now i think where it's just you give people power people are going to exploit that power because that's just what people do and we don't understand that about ourselves very well, it doesn't seem. But as a so as a business developer though, when is the time? Because you and I both watched a video in Minneapolis where the police were walking down a residential neighborhood, a neighborhood just like yours and mine. Mm-hmm. And they're like, get in your house, get in your house. And then the, once somebody yells, light them up, and they shoot them with uh, paintballs filled with pepper spray. Where is the point where we have to say, Okay, no more burning down schools and police stations and running each other over. You know, you're going to stay in your damn house. When is when is you know, when do we get to that line? I don't know. Yeah. And uh, I'm worried. I'm worried that if we don't hash it out because you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I think that most of us are really are on the same page. Like when mm-hmm. we go anywhere, when we drive somewhere, we go to the store, even within the protesters themselves down there, with the thousands of people that are that are down there, how many of them spray painted a dick on the Capitol? Most of them didn't do it. No. And most businesses didn't get smashed. Nope. So most people, yes, they were down there, but most of them were good. And I think that most people are good. Even the angry ones that are down there that have the time and the frustration or just the opportunity to go down there and see what's up with everybody because they're curious. Certainly those people are down there too. That most of them were getting along, but there are those things. And the only thing that we're going to see is we don't care about when everything's normal. We don't. We don't. That's not what our nature is. We want to know when things are exciting and what's new and, oh my God, I got to be prepared. That's just how we are. And like... I, I don't know all of the details about like police procedure or anything mm-hmm. else. I'm not a black person, so I don't I don't understand what what it feels like. I think that I tried to explain it the best to you. What I think it mm-hmm. could feel like is that you know, like it, when there's a car that when a cop pulls behind you on the freeway, that you're kind of like, oh, oh shit, that, mm-hmm. and maybe that when you're black that that's kind of like just that feeling every single time no matter what and where you are sure. and, and i don't that i maybe I, maybe that's not sufficient i'm not really sure but suffice to say that when that many people are saying that this is a problem we have a sort of a problem i guess but i you know i don't observe that in our local community i see our police working pretty well in our local community yeah but this is but this is say but this here is salem oregon and i know that more people than salem oregon watch watch this here but here we it pretty much is peaceful and it's just a few idiots that are doing some some bad things it just has the p- potential to get really bad, and that concerns me because it is not that way in a lot of parts of the city and some places in California where they're still locked down. Like, it could get really, really bad when people if they're if people are still stuck inside for even longer and they really start to lose their jobs. What do they have to lose? You know, though, one of the things that I when I I was talking to my wife about this is. One of the things I've noticed is why the heck would you start a protest march at 8, 9, or 10 o'clock at night? That is just asking for trouble. Even if you were a peaceful protest, why are you starting at 7 or 8 o'clock at night? That is not 
If you want to, you want people to see you. Go march on a Saturday or a Sunday at one o'clock in the afternoon. People are going to see you and recognize you then. It's modern day raiding. It is. <laughs> if you were starting you be seen. A, a protest at nine o'clock at night, and I was a city, I'd like, uh, uh-uh. uh. There's no good. You are not going to get your point across. That is not going to happen because even though it's only a few individuals, you have um, that stereotype of it's going to be damage. In Albany today, we did have a protest um, from four to six in the afternoon. And I think it was okay. You know, they definitely, there's more people there. They're getting their face seen. They're getting recognized for their cause. But part of the problem is, is all the bad protests yeah. have kind of um, given it a bad name. So we had all these businesses shut down in Albany today. Banks, uh, all kinds of businesses shut down at like 1 o'clock today and closed. And I'm sure the Albany one was just fine. But it's that stereotype of protest now that they're going to cause damage. Do your, do your yeah. protest in the middle of the day on a weekend if you want real results of it. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, there's you know, for me I'm curious what the protests would be. I have learned I, I learned just by you know, guilt by association here mm-hmm. pretty quick just from this channel. Um I'm trying to find out I'm trying to figure out how to navigate that the best that I can. Um and um I'm not sure exactly how to go about that because I really do want people to be unified and I really do want to be effective and I'm not sure how to inject myself into something like that or to have a conversation that means a lot because I feel like because I'm a white guy that grow that's in Oregon that it, it doesn't matter what my piece would be to say on how people should be on how people should get along isn't as well received, I guess, if that makes sense. But mm-hmm. is um, I'm less likely to be listened to because, you know, I have a stereotypically privileged life. And, yeah, that, that, that's, that's great, sure. Um, but I still believe that I can really help send the message of unity at the same time. And so I'm really trying to figure out about how I can be effective within that space um, of whatever race relations or community relations or things like that might be, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to use this channel to connect that. Yeah. And I don't know how, I don't know how to go about it. Um, because I'm not the person. So I guess, you know, like the attachment series things, like maybe for this channel, like we, well, there's we, a, maybe we need a voice for like that outlet about how like yeah. we can heal that relational community somehow. Oh, trust me, as an elected or official how we can now, make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> as an elected official, you get um, equity, diversity, and inclusion training thrown at you. Yeah. Um, and I mean that's just something we can both can look into. You know, is furthering that um, that talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion because that is that will strengthen our neighborhoods. It absolutely will. So, I guess maybe we'll talk later about yeah how how, how we maybe we could fill because now that I'm sitting here talking about it, I'm like that makes so much sense. Why would we not use mm-hmm. this channel's that outlet? Because I cannot be the effective voice in that community. I don't believe. No. I don't know. I don't know well, who could be. I don't think you have to be a certain. I mean, would it would it make a difference? Yes, but I well, think if even if you can impact five people around you and say, hey. You know, I re- I'm reading this book or I'm taking this training or, you know, I've been researching this a lot. I think this would help you as well. And I can help you through that journey. Even if you made five people. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a city block, you know. hundred percent. Yeah. Because everybody knows somebody. And I think I've got to. I think that there's somebody that is articulate and well-spoken that has a deeper grasp of an understanding on just the structure of how. Mm-hmm relationships like that work in that area with with race with race issues and things like that because i've never really experienced it like yeah i grew i grew up in sayo 
there was mm-hmm. well, there was a few of us <laughs> and like there were, there was a few of us most of us were white mm-hmm. <laughs> but not everybody was and there was just there was like 42 of us in our class so yeah. it was small enough that everybody just got along because they were these were just the kids that were in the whole school um so for me i didn't really understand that racism was necessarily like yeah i heard about it and knew about it but i never experienced it and i didn't even see it at at play Mm -hmm. um until really like mid mid high school and later and then took me a while to be like oh well i guess it like really is a problem in some areas and just my limited experience it's just i haven't experienced it and yeah let's be real there's just not that many black people in oregon and uh, at least in salem and so, well, I can tell. Uh, I mean, even being in the military and being in units that were predominantly black, uh, we're still not um, getting the same experience that they are. Even if you and I are the minority in a group, we're not going to get the same experience as a, a group of black people or other. You know. Yeah, and so I think maybe I wonder. So maybe there's a way again that we can use this to, you know, find a better avenue to your know, somebody to, you know, kind of help navigate, yeah, you absolutely. know, like mm-hmm. just the, the different communities within our community, because we are still a blended community mm-hmm. and, um, we, we can't let the division of some of the bigger cities come and tear apart our small communities. And I'm really afraid that that could be a thing. Cause we don't want to like for our small communities right now where we're, we are, we are predominantly white, but we really do get along. I think yeah. uh, there's, there's, we, get along real well and i think that now is the time for not to us to go like hmm, around our neighbor but it's like actually just <laughs> to reach out and maybe if we could use this to accomplish that and start a start conversations that we can prevent in the future mm-hmm. those sorts of looting and rioting situations because we will just have gotten past this um that's my goal awesome so all right yeah what else <sighs> Is that it? I think that's it. You know, like kind of talked, man. That's, yeah, that <laughs> subject, that whole subject is just a, a difficult one for everyone, and I think, I think it just needs to be a longer conversation and um, with different opinions and other, you know, other different paradigms brought in. Should have just listened to Rodney King in the '90s, and just when he said everybody should get along, like we should have just been like, "Yeah, dude, you're probably right." <laughs> It'd be a lot better. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's. That, I think that's a good thing, maybe for us to explore, um, and just you know, hey, just keep hammering the message of unity, um, unity, unity, unity. You know how we can get along with with our neighbors and put our minds in just somewhere that's you know more positive and that the world isn't just a bad place that's out to get us um and just be thankful for the things and the people that we do have like we said in the last episode we don't know what we're doing uh we're still trying to figure it out like everyone else we're just doing it into microphones and headphones um so we can broadcast it so um stick with us we are learning we are growing uh, you know, sometimes it feels like we were delivered a train and we haven't even built the train <laughs> station yet. So um, we're going to get there and we're going to take you with us. Peace. Apogee 8 podcasts are brought to you by Apogee Events, your all-inclusive and one-stop wedding event shop. Seven times finalist for Best Wedding DJ, Photo Booth, and Florist Megan has been twice nominated for Best Flowers for Weddings in Oregon for the last two years in a row to Oregon Bride Magazine. You can also check out our showroom and warehouse venues, uh, rentals, photography, wedding films, see how the photo booth works, even check out this podcast studio, which is available for rent. Uh, All-inclusive events at Apogee traditionally save 10 to 30% off of most of weddings because vendors are not competing against you for their business. They don't have to open up and go spend money at these giant showcases. They're all right here under one roof, serving Salem, Portland, Eugene, Bend, Oregon, soon to be the rest of the country. Uh, Mention Apogee 8 Podcast for 10% off of all things at Apogee or enter promo code 8 Podcast at checkout and instantly reserve your date and your services online at weareapogee.com. Weareapogee.com, promo code 8 Podcast at checkout will reserve your date instantly and save you 10% off of your events.